Hi, I'm Mitch Peacock and welcome to Don't Trash the Sash. Make sure and check out the series from the beginning. But either way, enjoy. Hi, I've been following Jim Sear as he makes repairs to the five sashes in this uh, bay window in Eastbourne. Today, Jim will be fitting the final sash and giving us a quick summary of the work that's been done on the window as a whole. First things first, this is a mouse. Yeah. I've heard that term before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that, that that's a little fishing weight. It can be any anything that you want with a with a lump of line. Yeah. That goes in there. And hopefully appears. Hopefully appears. And nowadays nothing works without glasses. You can barely see with them as well. I can barely see with them as well, as he said. <laughs> Right, okay. Now what we do is we do what's called a clove hitch. And all that is, is basically two loops crossed over. You pu push the rope through. Now, all we do is pull that up. Hey presto, it comes out the bottom. Now, having gone up there, we then take the rope That's it. Reach in, get the mouse. Now the window is, is ready for, for waiting. Goes through there. That slides up there. We take the weight. It goes in there. It's tied off. What I do is call is what's called a blood knot. Basically, it's just two loops or two or three loops, depending on the weight of the window, and that forms a knot so that it won't slip through the hole at the top. That goes in there. That's it. Um, now to keep the weight from moving about, we just take some mole grips, clamp, clamp them. Yep. So that's that side done. Can you hold that? folds back into there so it doesn't pull out. Put the sash pocket in. You'll notice on the sash pocket these, these are old ones. Yeah, there's a um, there's a wedge shaped on the end there. That actually fits up into a little wedge there and the rest is all push fit. Take the hammer, take the hammer, we'll just put this in lightly for the moment because it's got to come out again anyway. That slides up there.
And that's the replacement parting bead, which now has the uh, the draft seal on it. It's the, the replacement draft. Is if, if you can get in close there, yeah, you'll notice that it now springs. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. That's what forms the seal. Now what we have to do is because we've added a bit to the bot uh, to the top with the draft seal, we have to make sure that the the, the window fits, the bottom sash fits. Now this was the bottom sash that we had to remake, so it's slightly oversized, and we will trim it down. So the middle rails meet up. So the middle one. rails meet meet up. Now you'll notice that's it. You'll notice that it's on a slant. That's because the box over the years is now a parallelogram. So we have we have to hide that. At the bottom, we'll, we'll go outside in a second and you'll be able to see that on one side it touches and on the other side it's um, up in the air. Right. Yeah. So to stop that falling out while we're mucking about, we'll put a screw in. Because the last thing we want to do is re-glaze re a window. So that's now solid. Should we go outside? Yep. Yeah. That is actually sitting on on the ledge, on the, on the sill. On this side, there's a there's a good finger that can go underneath there. Yeah. So what we have to do is we have to shape the bottom rail to fit. And so what we'll do is we will take that off that distance there. Yeah. We've transferred over to this side. Yeah. Now we'll take the window out and uh, cut it to shape. When you put these in, classically it's done with nails. Um, however, um, what I do is I, I put, put these in with screws uh, because everybody's got a, a drill driver nowadays. Um, all tradesmen have anyway. And it's so a lot easier to take out. It's a lot easier to take out if there's any any need for adjustments. Yeah. All we're doing is just pinning it in for, for the moment. Normally you'd put, to put in two screws but because the uh, uh, because the windows are light we don't need to worry. This is the one that was that had a complete rotten bottom sash. So as you can see, there's a new one gone in, uh, mortised and tenoned in, new glass. So it's like a new window. And as I said, this will last another. With maintenance, it'll it'll last another 50, 60, 70, 100 years. In that time, at least two sets of double glazed windows will have had to be put into all the houses around here. Because there isn't a single piece of double glazed windows that's 30 years old that still looks good and is fully functional. These win this was the sash that had the agricultural glass in this it. That's the one, yeah. So now we can actually see out of it properly as well. Sorry? We can now see out of it properly. We can now see out of it, yeah. Now, put that in there. What we'll be doing is we'll be putting a little step on the, uh, on the window. That's, 
so that'll be for the moment until we come to fixing it properly now, but now that draft seal there that, the one that we put on outside now meets up completely with that one right yeah and forms a perfect seal yeah and whereas before there was a, a, a gale coming through there now nothing yeah. right the carbon footprint of these windows is zero we've done nothing other than bring them back up to standard yeah so if you're looking at the environment nothing has been stripped out nothing has been taken away the PVC windows have a huge um, carbon footprint because of the amount of petrochemicals that have to go into them for them to be manufactured. Now this was the, win the window that had the um, uh, meeting rail that was uh, rotted away. So as you can see now we've put a complete new meeting rail in that's actually mortised into the original mort uh, in uh, tenon into the original mortises. Yep. Yeah. Everything has been. This whole window was reglazed. Yeah. The muntins or glazing bars, depending on what you want to call them, yeah, have all been um, uh, renovated. Some have had. Uh, some parts have had to be made new. Yeah. If you go go down the the bottom here. Uh, this sill has been brought back up to standard yeah, and uh, ju just needs a little bit of filler. This was the window that had the, this was the section that had the scarfed in joint about there. Um, to my mind, having taken it all away and put it, put it back, this was quicker and looks better and will last longer yep. um, because it's a complete part. There's no water gonna, ingress going to be able to rot away the, the joints because it's always on the joints that um, things fail. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Coming around here, here you can see new meets old and there's not that big a difference except that this is very close grained wood yeah. um, whereas nowadays modern wood tends to be um, a lot more open grained. Yeah. Yep. Coming around here, this afternoon, these um, these fissures will be will be cut out or opened up, uh, and then a um, epoxy resin will be put in put in in there, and it will be taken back to to, to bare wood. As I said at the um, on the first part, that you don't cover it with epoxy. There's nothing wrong with epoxy provided you use it sparingly. As soon as you start using it um, in massive clumps, that's when it all goes horribly wrong. So these fissures will be filled, yeah, and that will be good and, uh, again for another 40, 50 years. And the wood will still be able to breathe. And the wood will be able to breathe because it will be breathing where the fissures aren't. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Yeah. As you can see, here's, here's the parting bead again. And you can see the spring in it that allows the windows to slide up and down with ease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, the, these ones have uh, have all been done. They've all been uh, reputted. All the faces are, have been made new. We're in the process of cleaning them up at the moment and doing a final smoothing over. Now, when we come round to this side. Yeah. This is the window that we were just doing. We need, need need a little bit more, but you can see how solid that is. That's the original wood. Yeah. In fact, this is the whole top sash uh, is still original. Yeah. It's just needed to be uh, the, the the face is made good. Yeah. yeah. And and cl uh, and cl cleaned up. Um, a complete bottom rail has been put in. So again, the um, the tenons go all the way into the mortises, all the way through, uh, because we took the glass out, and as you can see, now it's clear, whereas before it looked more like frosted glass. Yeah. By the end of the day, 
uh, all, all of this will be cleaned up and it'll be ready for the um, uh, the clients to to start decorating I think he's gone off to uh, to a festival this weekend so when when he gets back on Monday uh, he'll have a lovely job ahead of him <laughs> mm. uh, and, and that's it As if, if you look along you can see it just looks fabulous I'd like to thank you Jim for what's been a good introduction to the work of a restorative carpenter. Yeah. It's been uh, it's been great. Thank you very much. Mitch, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Cheers. Real pleasure. I hope we meet you again. Too. We will, I'm sure. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Cheerio!